everybody so today let us talk about two major diseases one is sickle cell anemia and the other one is your thalassemia okay very important topics first what are the types of hemoglobin that all of us have one is hba that is adult hemoglobin okay so adult hemoglobin is made up of alpha 2 and beta 2 chains i hope you all know this basic okay alpha 2 and beta 2 even if you don't know it's okay no problem so alpha 2 chains and two uh, beta chains next hba2 what is it that is another kind of hemoglobin that we have and it is made up of alpha 2 and delta 2 okay and next what another type of hemoglobin that we have especially the children okay we don't have the children the infants will have alpha 2 and gamma 2 chains okay so this is your by hearting portion no concept so we have uh, in humans there are three types of hemoglobin one is the adult hemoglobin that you see hba where you have alpha 2 and beta 2 chains hba2 and hbf that is fetal hemoglobin where this you remember okay it is alpha 2 and gamma 2 okay so what is a sickle cell anemia guys what happens in sickle cell anemia is you know uh, in our rbc okay what do we have in rbc we have got heme right and this heme is made up of lot of chains globin chains okay so just remember that at a beta 6 level of this heme molecule the glutamic acid is replaced by valin okay the glutamic acid is replaced by valin so how will you memorize it hmm? gluta g for go away so glutamic acid is going away and valin is welcomed valin is welcomed so this glutamic acid is the one that is responsible for hbaa that is adult hemoglobin and valin valin okay in patients who have sickle cell anemia valin analog our color instead of glutamic acid so valin our hemoglobin ss variety okay so in the question hpss anor patient in all other angle it means the diagnosis is what guys it is sickle cell anemia okay now what kind of mutation is this there are different types of mutation like missense hmm? nonsense so this is a type of missense mutation that's all you should know missense mutation here guys what is the uh, physiology behind it so i'm sorry pathology behind it see now the rbc is in the alkyla their rbc's okay sometimes they will be normal but under certain conditions like let us say when the oxygen is low and other conditions i'll tell you what are the other conditions when the oxygen is low they will uh, the rbc's will show their true colors they become sickle shaped okay now usually the rbc's are uh, which shape guys tell me what is the normal shape of rbc's it is biconcave shape okay now this once the condition comes back to normal like one the patient starts getting enough of oxygen let us say his oxygen level has come to normal then what what will happen there is reversal of sickling that is the sickle uh, rbc's they will uh, become normal shaped okay so this process keeps on continuing and at a time a time will reach where there is irreversible uh, production of sickle cells so there is it's gonna be irreversible production of sickle cells after a point of time okay now tell me what are the factors affecting sickling so like uh, what increases sickling i told you one factor here when the oxygen decreases in the body the rbc's in such people will tr uh, will show the true colors okay our sickled rbc's at tomorrow so <clears throat> more amount the more amount of hbs Okay, hemoglobin s the patient has more will be the sickling that is one second hypoxia that is when there is oxygen a decrease in the body again there is going to be more of sickling cells formed okay sickle cells formed third one guys when the ph decreases that is when the body due to some reason gets acidosis again see so basically all the stress conditions okay stress separate and dialum our normal rbc's is sickled rbc's at the patients okay the fourth one is dehydration when water is low in the body okay now <coughs> tell me one question if the patient has more of hbf okay i'm not saying hbs but fetal hemoglobin is more in a patient will the sickling increase or decrease say fetal hemoglobin no it has increased affinity towards oxygen it has increased affinity towards oxygen so it will not allow that uh, environment to have less oxygen every on oxygen could be the other hpf in there uh, I wonder and uh, there will be less sickling. See, oxygen coronal less sickling and down also. In this condition, when there is increased HPF, okay, the oxygen affinity increases. So often oxygen affinity of such a hemoglobin increases. 
and when oxygen is enough and more okay for the hemoglobin then adu prashna onnu undakkatilla there is going to be no sickling understood okay my next question to you suppose what if a patient has got sickle alpha thalassemia sickle alpha thalassemia is it a boon or a plus tell me okay i'll talk about alpha thalassemia and all okay uh ipam just remember that if the patient has sickle cell anemia and alpha thalassemia it's actually okay um his symptoms will be less because in alpha thalassemia endha sambhavikkunnu nariyo avarra alpha chains nanu problem alpha chains na problem so when alpha chains are less hemoglobin formation koreyo koodu ഹിമോ ഹിമോഗ്ലോബിൻ ഉണ്ടാവണമെങ്കിൽ നമുക്ക് ആൽഫ ചെയിൻസും ബീറ്റ ചെയിൻസും വേണം സോ ഈൻസ് ആൽഫ തലസിമയിൽ ആൽഫ ചെയിൻസിൻ്റെ പ്രോബ്ലം ആണ് ഓക്കെ ആർ ബി സിയിൽ അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഹിമോഗ്ലോബിൻ അങ്ങനത്തെ ആൾക്കാരിൽ കുറവായിരിക്കും ഓക്കെ വെൻ ഹിമോഗ്ലോബിൻ ഇസ് ലെസ് ഹിമോഗ്ലോബിനിലാണല്ലോ ഈ ഗ്ലൂട്ടാമിക് ആസിഡ് ഇസ് ചേഞ്ചിങ് ഇൻ ടു വാലിൻ ഈ ഈ ഗ്ലൂട്ടാമിക് ആസിഡ് ആൻഡ് വാലിൻ ഞാൻ ആദ്യം പറഞ്ഞ രണ്ട് കാര്യങ്ങളും ഇത് രണ്ടും ഹിമോഗ്ലോബിൻ്റെ കോമ്പനൻസ് ആണ് ഓക്കെ സോ വെൻ ഹിമോഗ്ലോബിൻ ഇസ് ലെസ് ഈ ഒരു ചേഞ്ചും ഇങ്ങനത്തെ പേഷ്യൻസിൽ നടക്കുന്ന കുറവായിരിക്കും അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ അവരുടെ സിക്ലിങ് എന്തായിരിക്കും കുറവായിരിക്കും ഓക്കെ സോ ബേസിക്കലി ജസ്റ്റ് റിമെമ്പർ യുവർ ടീച്ചർ ആസ്ക് യു വാട് ആർ ദ ടു കണ്ടീഷൻസ് വെയർ സിക്ലിങ് വിൽ ബി ലെസ് ഓർ ടെൽ മി വൺ ഡിസീസ് വെയർ സിക്ലിങ് ഈവൻ ദോ ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ആ സിക്കിൾ സെൽ അനീമിയ ദ സിക്ലിങ് വിൽ ബി ലെസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് സിക്കിൾ ആൽഫ തലസീമിയ ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ വെൻ യു നോ ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ ഇൻഫെൻറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വെൻ ഹി ഹാസ് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് എച്ച് ബി എഫ് ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ ഗൈസ് now okay now tell me guys the question is these are the hemoglobin types okay what is the patient uh, diagnosis hba means normal adult hemoglobin uh, ana so it is a normal adult okay hbas that means a chain und s chain und so it is like you know it is a sickle cell trait okay sickle cell trait ana don't write your diagnosis sickle cell anemia because hbs is randadum s s ningal kaanuvanengil mathramana the sickle cell anemia avva if it is as that is or adult component ayalkundu adult hemoglobin the component ayalkundu pinne hbs und which is sickle cell trait now if <coughs> if they give you this question what is it guys anyways s you see that means he has definitely sickle cell right sickle cell and what is beta 0 that means it is beta thalassemia right beta chains are not formed okay beta chains are not formed that is beta thalassemia so it is sickle cell anemia plus beta thalassemia that is a diagnosis here okay now tell me guys what is the clinical feature of Uh, sickle cell anemia so the rbc is here formed ivada the rbc is proper alla le nammada sickled rbcs aanu so whenever the rbcs are not normal okay the hero the spleen the hero of the body comes and it will eat these rbcs is like are you not proper nalla rbcs alla nalla rbcs alle namaku body le vechondirikkan pattathilla so spleen the inganathe rbcs ne konnu kalai so inganathe aalkarile njan paranju avar rbcs ellam the sickled rbcs aanu appo spleen vicharikku modiru foreign body aanu idoru nalla rbc alla foreign body alla നല്ലൊരു സെൽ അല്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ അതിനെ കൊന്നുകളെ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ദ സ്പ്ലീൻ വിൽ കില്ലറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് ഡസ് വാട്ട് ഗൈസ് എക്സ്ട്രാ വാസ്കുലർ ഹിമോലൈസസ് ഐ ഹോപ്പ് യു നോ ദാറ്റ് ഞാൻ ടെൽ മീ വാട്ട് ഇസ് ത്രീ തിങ്സ് വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ത്രീ തിങ്സ് ദറ്റ് യു സീൻ എക്സ്ട്രാ വാസ്കുലർ ഹിമോലൈസസ് യെസ് ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ഹാവ് ആർ ബി സിസ് ആർ ഗെറ്റിംഗ് ലൈസ്ഡ് റൈറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ സ്പ്ലീൻ സോ ദ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ഹാവ് പാലോ ദർ ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി ജോണ്ടസ് ആൻഡ് ദെൻ ദർ ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി സ്പ്ലീനോ മെഗാലി ഓക്കെ ദീസ് ത്രീ തിങ്സ് സ്പ്ലീനോ മെഗാലി സോ ഇഫ് യു ടീച്ചർ ആസ്ക് യു വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ത്രീ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് of extravascular hemolysis you will say madam it is pallor jaundice and splenomegaly very simple questions only mostly they ask in your bio and all okay fine now sickle cells are very sticky to each other okay so remember that these sickle cells you know they are very sticky to each other okay adond then they will form clots okay so kore sickle cells they will join like this and they will form clots and when these clots enter different organs it can block the blood supply to the organs and can cause ischemia for example in the brain okay in the brain if this clot okay so here a clot is formed a lot of rbcs are very sticky to each other okay so they are going to form a clot and these clot will travel all over the body affecting different organs when they go to the brain what happens these uh, sticky cells will occlude it and he, it can cause stroke right stroke okay what happens to the heart heart they can cause they can go to the heart and cause myocardial infarction what happens to the lungs guys they can go to the lungs and they can cause acute chest syndrome acute chest syndrome okay now it can also go to the bones guys okay let us say it can go to the femur it can go to any bone okay mostly femur and tell me if the blood supply of a bone 
is uh, cut what do you call it yes if a blood supply of a bone is cut okay is blocked you the bone will go for avascular necrosis very important okay it can go for avascular necrosis next digits what happens to your fingers hmm? okay it can it, these clots can also go to your digits okay and it can cause dactylitis okay it can cause dactylitis okay what happens to the vertebra these clots can go to the vertebra okay let us say this is the uh, vertebra hmm? and it can give a specific appearance of the vertebra called as fish mouth vertebra what is it fish mouth vertebra so tell me my question to you this fish mouth vertebra is seen where all why my question fish mouth vertebra is seen where all you will say sir it is seen in two conditions one is yes you are learning about it right now which is sickle cell anemia second it is also seen in osteoporosis osteoporosis okay you got full marks here another question the examiner ask you okay beta you told this hmm? now tell me where can you see fish mouth heart valve uh, i don't know if i have a picture of that okay go and see the picture of uh, just a moment i'll show you the picture wait okay before that fish mouth heart valve where do you see hmm? question yes you see that in rheumatic heart disease okay so you see fish mouth heart valve in uh, rheuma rheumatic heart disease now let me show you the picture okay so can you see this is a fish mouth vertebra okay this is a fish mouth vertebra you see in osteoporosis and sickle cell anemia then you can see this picture guys can you see it looks like okay this is your heart valve and you can see that looks like a mouth of a fish okay so that is your fish mouth heart valve which is seen in rheumatic heart disease your question okay fish mouth heart valve is seen in rheumatic heart disease rhd next guys what is the diagnosis in such patients okay ningala you have a doubt of the patient has sickle cell anemia how will you diagnose okay first when you take the blood your hp is going to be low definitely rbc is a proper rbc is are being broken down by the spleen right so definitely hp is going to be low what about the reticulocyte count okay that is the bone marrow will make reticulocytes you know that right reticulocytes are nothing but you know the uh, rbcs right so itrem rbcs in our spleen kunnu kalayunnodane bone marrow will hyper work okay and they will produce lot of reticulocytes okay so reticulocyte count will increase what about bilirubin guys tell me bilirubin hmm? rbcs are getting lysed in the spleen uh, so what happens to the bilirubin yeah rbcs are getting lysed so bilirubin will increase what about esr okay this is a question for you what happens to esr okay in sickle cell anemia that is uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate okay let me show you suppose you know what is erythro uh, erythro uh, esr right suppose i'm taking a blood sample just a moment yeah, i'm taking a blood sample uh, after some time okay this one will settle and form here okay so this is what your esr is okay but in sickle cell anemia you tell me what happens esr increases or decreases the answer is esr decreases in sickle cell anemia my question is why see guys i told you the sickle cells are sticky but you know they have this weird shape na they have this sickle weird shape so you know they don't fit into each other they don't actually fit into each other so that is why they just stay where they are they don't settle down okay though they are sticky they cannot fit so much into each other so they just stay here like unlike the normal blood they don't settle down so the esr is going to be less had all the rbcs settled okay had then your esr would have been this much right but here in sickle cell anemia are some rbcs these rbcs no they will stay here only okay they won't settle like this so the esr is going to be esr is this is how you calculate okay you have a tube and evada mere ana oru rbc blood ningal kaanunnathu after settling that is your esr so e sickle cell anemia la avaru settle eyathilla adond ana esr korayum okay so this is your question esr decreases in sickle cell anemia how will you memorize it hmm? so the code here is esr only e stands for esr esr in sickle cell anemia is reduced okay esr in sickle cell anemia is reduced okay here you have a code also now you won't forget now okay guys now we will talk about the peripheral smear just a moment i'll show you the picture of peripheral smear yes here just don't look anything else just see this okay so can you see that the rbcs here okay they are sickle shaped right they are sickle shaped now my question to you is guys in a uh, sickle cell anemia 
and sickle cell trait how is the peripheral smear going to appear okay will you see uh, sickling sickled cells in both the conditions hmm? the answer is guys see in sickle cell anemia definitely you are going to see what sickling of the cells okay but in sickle cell trait okay trait is like a traitor okay so here ningal sickle cell trait la ningal peripheral smear la eduthale you cannot see the uh, sickling of the cells or the sickle cells remember that okay so uh, if madam asks you can sickle cells be seen in sickle cell trait in peripheral smear your answer is no sickle cells are seen only in sickle cell anemia okay what is the other name of sickle cells what is the other name of sickle cells guys it is drepanocytes very important drepanocytes okay one word question so now the most important topic of sickle cell anemia is something called as sickling test okay sickling test what is it guys this is done when the peripheral uh, peripheral smear you have taken a peripheral smear of a patient whom you suspected to have what sickle cell anemia but the peripheral smear came to be normal okay but then he has got all the clinical features all the clinical features of uh, sickle cell anemia so what do you do next okay you go for a sickling test very very important okay how do you do a sickling test you take a drop of blood okay you take one drop of blood okay this is my slide you take one drop of blood i took and what are you going to add to it hmm? you are adding something called as one drop of 2% sodium listen carefully okay sodium meta bisulfite okay sodium meta bisulfite or the other name is sodium dithionate okay so this is a, a three star question what is the, what is the chemical that you use in sickling test it is 2% sodium meta bisulfite okay now what is what is the uh, you know concept behind is that this chemical you no know, this 2% sodium meta bisulfite what does it do it re it removes the oxygen from this drop of blood okay so from from this drop of blood it will remove the oxygen so i told you whenever oxygen is decreased the sickle cells okay the patients rbcs will show their real color so they will start sickling and now if you see under the microscope okay you can see the sickling of the cell so so this will anyways uh, you know take away all the oxygen so we want we don't want any oxygen from the environment also uh in the slide so what we do is we cover it with a cover slip okay you cover it with a cover slip you seal it uh, you seal it with paraffin wax so that no oxygen can even enter from the environment into the drop of blood so in that condition the rbcs in this drop of blood no they will become so angry are i am getting stressed there is no oxygen let me show my true colors and now when you see it in peripheral smear you can see what guys sickling of the cells let me show the picture just a moment yeah so this is a yes this is a picture of sickling okay sickling of rbcs fine okay tell me guys what is the confirmatory test of sickle cell anemia hmm? it is very important hb electrophoresis okay it is hb electro forces now i'll show you the picture see this is how the result of hb i'll show you i'll just tell you how to read a uh, hb electrophoresis you know it's basically hb electrophoresis now you have an anode you have a cathode okay positive negative charges and all that stuff so this side okay this side is your anode okay and this side is your cathode okay and remember the code here which is hafsa okay hafsa so ivide endha nammal cheyunnu vachala nammal drop of blood edittu okay oh no no i'll just tell you uh, how to interpret this okay that's enough so uh, these are uh, results of different people okay now if uh, the first one is h that stands for hbh hemoglobin h and this is your hemoglobin a that is adult hemoglobin which is normal this is hemoglobin f which is a fetal hemoglobin and uh, this okay this area okay basically what i say is this area is for hemoglobin a i'll tell you just as of now uh, just on the uh, you know listen to what i say initially it might be a little confusing so now this area is for hbf and this area is for uh, hbs hbd okay and this area is for hbc hb uh, i'm sorry yeah. the last area is for c stands for cathode here okay the last area is for is for hba2 hb or uh, c hbe hbo now see this is uh, I, i've written the numbers here okay so 1 to 11 these are the patients okay now 
let us take this for example okay this is my first patient okay you can see that he has got only see he has got mark only over here okay is this mark here no is there a mark blue mark here no is there a blue mark here no so which means that he has got only hba which means that it is normal that is adult hemoglobin so this patient here he is normal understood guys okay now what about okay let me show another one again see this this patient that is sixth patient again if you see there is a blue line only in this region is there a blue line here no is there a blue line here is there a blue line here no so that means he does not have f he does not have s he does not have hemoglobin a to e o he just has got h b a that is hemoglo adult hemoglobin only so this patient here is also normal is that clear okay now look at uh, this one guys this one my patient 9 here yes here it is positive right and here also it is positive so that means he has got h b a right and this stands for what guys yeah mostly uh, you know when i say s h b s d g lepor okay mostly we take into consideration s and d only okay so he has got h b a and h b s that's how you interpret okay so that means it is a sickle cell h b a is there h b s is there which means it is a sickle cell trait okay now see this patient this patient here he has line only over this area only over this area okay here your interpretation should be either it could be hbs or it could be hba uh, sorry uh, hb d okay so if the line is only in this area then your interpre interpretation should be it should be, uh, it could be either hbs or hb d now to understand which one hpd is you know it's called as a punjab hemoglobin okay now to differentiate these two okay either the patient i want to know if the patient has hps or hpd we do another electrophoresis called as cellulose uh, we do a electro uh, electrophoresis called as citrate electrophoresis okay that all uh, this information is not needed i just want you to interpret how it is i hope this is clear okay so if you see yeah one line here one line here it is hba and okay it is hbs don't consider this okay so he has got hba and hbs which means he is a sickle cell trait but if another scenario okay if the question says that he has got only mark here which means that his hemoglobin is any of these mostly we will say it is either hbs or hbd now to differentiate that we have another electrophoresis called as citrate electrophoresis not required so i hope you understood basic idea on how to you know come to a, come to a diagnosis yes that's it huh? now one question to you what is a gold standard okay what is a, a gold standard test for any hemoglobinopathies let us say uh, uh, it could be sickle cell anemia thalassemia any hemoglobinopathies what is a gold standard test hmm? it is hplc very important question that is high pressure liquid chromatography okay uh basically yeah, it's just a one word question you don't you don't have to know more about it so if someone asks someone ask you what is a gold standard test for any hemoglobinopathies it is hplc which is tell me high pressure liquid chromatography okay now finally guys how will you treat sickle cell anemia see i told you uh whenever there is decreased oxygen sickling happens more so your treatment should aim at reducing this condition that means you in improve the oxygen or increase the oxygen of the patient right so this we do by increasing the hpf in the patient that is fetal hemoglobin in the patient now fetal hemoglobin i told you has increased affinity towards um, oxygen right increased affinity towards oxygen so therefore it will stay in places where you know or it will take up all the oxygens and when there is enough oxygen sickling won't occur right this principle you know so you do something to increase the hbf of hbf that is fetal hemoglobin of the patient and that is by giving a drug called as hydroxyurea that is by giving a drug called as important question hydroxyurea so hydroxyurea increases fetal hemoglobin which uh, fetal hemoglobin has increased affinity towards oxygen and this will reduce sickling okay so yeah basically that's a treatment in brief about sickle cell anemia hmm? next guys we'll talk about thalassemia okay so yeah thalassemia before going to that 
uh, adult hemoglobin has got two chains okay two alpha chains and two beta chains hmm? alpha chains are produced by alpha gene okay and beta chains are produced by beta gene now the question here is this alpha gene is in which chromosome and this beta gene is in which chromosome tell me alpha gene is in chromosome number 16 okay and beta gene is in chromosome number 11 okay this is something that you need to mug up hmm? so yeah now why does uh, thalassemia occur okay so thalassemia what happens is you know um, yeah this alpha and beta chains are basically what guys they form the heme right hemoglobin now in thalassemia what happens is that either the alpha chain chains have problem or the beta chains have problem hmm? now when it comes to alpha okay the alpha genes will get deleted okay genetically the alpha genes might get deleted and this causes alpha thalassemia now the beta chains okay in some people can get mutated what is it mutated and this can cause beta thalassemia understood so basically thalassemia is what other hemolytic anemia ana ivarade rbc's proper a irikkilla because rbc's nathola heme inde chains heme is made up of alpha chains beta chains i told you so ee chains nendengil or problem ullavunde avare heme proper a irikkilla so proper allatha or heme carry cheyna rbc നമ്മുടെ സ്പ്ലീൻ എന്ത് ചെയ്യും കൊന്നുകളയും ഓക്കെ സോ ഇങ്ങനത്തെ ആൾക്കാരുടെ ആർ ബി സി കൗണ്ട് വളരെ കുറവായിരിക്കും സോ തലസിമിയ ഇസ് എ ടൈപ്പ് ഓഫ് ഹിമുലറ്റിക് അനീമിയ നൗ ദിസ് ഇസ് എ പാത്തോളജി ഓക്കെ സോ ഇവിടെ ഒന്നെങ്കിൽ ടു ദ ആൽഫ ചെയിൻസ് ബിക്കം ആബ്സെൻറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് കോസസ് ആൽഫ തലസിമി ആൻഡ് ബീറ്റ ചെയിൻസ് ക്യാൻ ഗെറ്റ് മ്യൂട്ടേറ്റഡ് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ക്യാൻ കോസ് ബി ദാറ്റ് ക്യാൻ കോസ് ബീറ്റ തലസിമിയ ഹൗ ലി മെമ്മറൈസ് ഇറ്റ് ആൽഫ ഇസ് ഫോർ ആബ്സെൻറ്റ് എ എ okay and beta beta uh, is mutated in malayalam we say mari mari poi right mari poi so that is uh, mutated now let's talk about a beta thalassemia okay so first we learn about beta thalassemia guys and then just few points about alpha thalassemia mostly the questions are on beta thalassemia hmm? okay now tell me guys this beta thalassemia is of three types tell me what are they it is thalassemia major then we have thalassemia intermedia then we have thalassemia minor or the thalassemia trait now this thalassemia major what is what are the other two names of thalassemia major you will tell me it's called as cooley's anemia it's called as what cooley's anemia they'll ask you in the question what is the other name of thalassemia major it is cooley's anemia the other name is transfusion dependent anemia because i'll tell you okay in detail about it so uh, people who have thalassemia major are kept in transfusion and i'll tell you why so it is transfusion dependent okay transfusion dependent now coming to the last one this uh, thalassemia minor or the trait basically e patients under law they're very happy people because they don't have any symptoms our our core clinical features will hmm? absolutely normal they are okay so they are going to be asymptomatic and they do not of course they don't require any transfusion so they are called as i mean this kind of uh, anemia is called as transfusion independent transfusion aavashyam ingena thalassemia minor alkark illa they are completely normal people but why are we studying about it i'll tell you okay now <coughs> what happens in thalassemia major guys we are talking about beta thalassemia now in moon uh, traits lim not traits in moon conditions lim there are some problems with the beta chains of the hemoglobin beta chain okay so in thalassemia major both the beta chains are absent okay both the beta chains are absent now that is a big problem whereas thalassemia intermedia na there are beta chains okay there's a little bit of beta chains are present in the body little bit okay whereas in thalassemia minor it's like a combination they will have a normal one beta will be normal and the other beta may be absent okay when i write the zero on top it means that this this beta is absent or it could be another combination like they have a normal beta chain and you know that somewhat positive another beta chain so that is your transfusion uh, uh that is your thalassemia minor okay or thalassemia trait okay now let's talk about the clinical features so all of these i told you what happens rbc's ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ടാവുന്ന ആർ ബി സീസ് വളരെ ഡിഫക്റ്റീവ് ആണ് ബിക്കോസ് അവരുടെ ബീറ്റാ ചെയിൻസ് ആർ നോട്ട് പ്രോപ്പർ അപ്പം ബീറ്റാ ചെയിൻസ് പ്രോപ്പർ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അവർക്ക് ഹീം നന്നായിട്ട് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല ഹീം പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യ പ്രൊഡ്യ
ഒരു യൂസ്ലെസ് ആർ ബി സി ആണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് ആർ ബി സിൻ്റെ സ്പ്ലീൻ കൊന്നുകളെയും സോ സ്പ്ലീൻ കൊന്നുകളെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ നമ്മൾ വി സേ ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ബീട്ട തലസിമ ദർ ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി എക്സ്ട്രാ വാസ്കുലർ ഹിമോലൈസിസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് എ സ്പ്ലീൻ ഇസ് കില്ലിംഗ് ഓൾ ദ ആർ ബി സിസ് ടെൽ മീ യു വിൽ ടെൽ മീ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് എക്സ്ട്രാ വാസ്കുലർ ഹിമോലൈസിസ് യെസ് ടെൽ മീ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് പാല ജസ്റ്റ് എ മൊമെൻറ്റ് യാ സോ ദർ ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി പാല I'll write it. Where should I write it? Okay, I'll just write it here. Yeah. Uh, Pallor, there is going to be jaundice and then there is going to be splenomegaly. Okay, there is going to be splenomegaly. Fine. Now, what about the HB? See, in thalassemia major, okay, it is a very severe condition. Okay, the HB is going to be very, very low. Like 3 to 5 is going to be their HB and that is why I said thalassemia major or the alkar is transfusion at a kid in the middle of because our HB, massive white HB is in a spleen so, our മാസ്സീവ് ആയിട്ട് ആർ ബി സിസിനെ സ്പ്ലീൻ കൊന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പോൾ അവർക്ക് എച്ച് പി കുറവായിരിക്കും സോ നമ്മൾ ഇടയ്ക്കിടയ്ക്ക് ട്രാൻസ്മിഷൻ കൊടുക്കണം സോ വൺ പോയിന്റ് ഓക്കെ വാട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ഇൻ്റർമീഡിയ ഥാലസീമിയ ഇൻ്റർമീഡിയ അവരുടെ എച്ച് ബി ഇസ് അബൌട്ട് ഫൈവ് ടു എയ്റ്റ് ബേസിക്കലി ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ എച്ച് ബി ആണ് ഓക്കെ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ലെസ് ബട്ട് ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ നോട്ട് വെരി സിവിയർ ആസ് ഇൻ ഥാലസീമിയ മേജർ വാട്ട് അബൌട്ട് ഥാലസീമിയ മൈന ഓർ ഥാലസീമിയ ട്രീറ്റ് ഐ ടോൾഡ് യു ഇങ്ങനത്തെ പീപ്പിൾ ഹാപ്പി പീപ്പിൾ ആണ് നോർമൽ പീപ്പിളിനെ പോലെയാണ് ദർ എച്ച് ബി ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി നോർമൽ ഓക്കെ ദേ ഡോൺ ഹാവ് എനി പ്രോബ്ലം ഓക്കെ their hp is going to be normal now iron profile so what happens to the iron profile <coughs> in thalassemia major guys there is going to be iron overload and now you will tell me why there is iron overload in such people in thalassemia major because now barnu ingena thalassemia major ulla aalkarle excessive aayittu blood transfusion nammal kodute pattu because our hp bayangara koravana so nammal blood kodukumba definitely blood inde kooda end patient body like jellum iron in jellum so there is going to be iron overload in them what about um, thalassemia intermedia the iron there is no overload avarku okay, ingena the continuous aayittu blood uh, transfusion da avashyamilla so there is no iron overload what happens in thalassemia minor will they also have uh, iron overload no in thalassemia minor or a trait everything no they don't have any symptoms so power kid undavu adu undavu na ningal sir choichal no sir they'll be absolutely normal okay now fine <coughs> Now, there is one more thing. In HP electrophosis, this is the third thing. Okay, in this HP electrophosis, we have to find the answer to the diagnosis. Uh, like, is it a thalassemia major, minor or intermedia? So, now, before I tell you what you see in HP electrophosis, what is the result you see in each of these three, let's learn a little bit of genetics about beta thalassemia. That is important. Okay. Okay, in beta thalassemia, what is the most, I told you, it is a mutation problem. So, beta chains, they get mutated. Okay. that is a problem and that is why the patient is having thalassemia a condition called as thalassemia so what is the most common mutation occurring in beta thalassemia patient you will tell me yes it is splicing okay so this is a question second there is something called as frame shift mutation okay learn it only if uh, you think it is necessary because yeah it's not so uh, important ഇത്രയും ഡീറ്റെയിൽ ആയിട്ട് അവർ വൈബൽ ഒന്നും ചോദിക്കില്ല ബട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് ഫോർ യു ടു നോ സോ ദർ ഇസ് സംതിങ് കോൾഡ് എസ് ഫ്രെയിം ഷിഫ്റ്റ് മ്യൂട്ടേഷൻ അറ്റ് പ്ലേസസ് എയ്റ്റ് നയൻ ആൻഡ് ഫോർട്ടി വൺ ഫോർട്ടി ടു ഓക്കെ ഇഫ് യു ഡോ വോണ്ട് ലോൺ ദിസ് ലീവ് ഇറ്റ് ന ഐ ടോൾ യു ദർ ഇസ് മോസ്റ്റ്ലി ഡിലീഷൻ ഓക്കെ ഡിലീഷൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് ബീറ്റ ചെയിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് അക്കറിങ് ബട്ട് ദെൻ ഇൻ സം കേസസ് ഐ എം സോറി യാ ഇൻ മോസ്റ്റ് ദ കേസസ് ഇൻ ബീറ്റ ഥാലസീമിയ ദർ ഇസ് മ്യൂട്ടേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് അക്കറിങ് ഓക്കെ uh in some cases there is deletion that is occurring of the uh, beta chain there is deletion well this is important okay deletion of 619 base pair okay can also cause beta thalassemia well this was a previous year question in uh, multiple uh, competitive exams so deletion of the beta chain that is 619 base pair can also cause beta thalassemia but if the question is what happens in beta thalassemia the beta you, your answer is the beta chain of the hemoglobin they get mutated and he was not formed properly so the rbcs cannot mature you know rbcs become useless and rbcs are killed by the spleen so this happens in and the patient gets anemia so this happens in beta thalassemia that is a pathology behind it okay now guys about the Uh, pathogenesis more in detail about beta thalassemia major okay so we'll talk about beta thalassemia major here what happens i told you this is the genetics b0 b0 means beta chains are not at all formed so normally we have two alpha chains we have two beta chains right but here in these people beta chains are not there so you know what these alpha chains will do these alpha chains will combine with other two 
alpha chains okay so there were normally there are two alpha chains and two beta chains right now in such people there are no beta chains at all right so what will the alpha chains do alpha chains will combine with other two alpha chains and these will form alpha tetramers alpha 4 tetramers now these alpha 4 hemoglobin c it was supposed to be alpha 2 beta 2 in all of us that is normal but if in a patient okay in thalassemia major there is a this this kind of hemoglobin that is formed that is alpha 4 tetramers yeah so these alpha 4 uh, tetramers are formed and these alpha 4 tetramers they are very defective right so what is so what does this spleen do yeah it will kill these kind of rbc's and our spleen and so rbc count is coming down in the body right so the bone marrow will think like array the rbc's are going down in the body bone marrow on alone our rbc all cells and produce in the bone marrow but when the rbc count is going down in the body the bone marrow will be like okay let me produce more and more of rbc precursors okay all rbc name uh, in the spleen so now i'm going to produce the rbc's name produce it in the bone marrow which are so there is going to be increased bone marrow activity okay keep that in mind first point second so i told you alpha chains will join with other two alpha chains okay because they don't have beta 2 chains to form alpha 4 tetramers okay the second uh, thing you know chala alpha chains chala alpha 2 chains they will join with other gamma 2 chains okay and beta 2 illa okay njan enna pinna gamma 2 aite join cheyunu and chala alpha 2 chains parayam so alpha 2 gamma 2 you tell me what is it from which kind of hemoglobin that is it is fetal hemoglobin okay now you all know that fetal hemoglobin has increased affinity towards oxygen so ingena the po ingena the fetal hemoglobin aitulla rbc nammada anganathe aalkarra body il form cheyunu it requires a lot of oxygen. Okay, increased affinity for oxygen. So, the RBC is the body, is the body, the tissue, the tissue is oxygen extract. Because uh, fetal HB is okay, a normal person, fetal HB is count of the tissue oxygen because it allows oxygen a lot. And this causes what guys? This causes tell me tissue hypoxia. Now you will tell me whenever there is tissue hypoxia, what increases in the body? Tell me. Very good. It is erythropoietin. So erythropoietin will increase in the body whenever there is tissue hypoxia. Okay. Now when erythropoietin increases in the body, just a moment. Huh? Yeah, so when erythropoietin increases in the body, what does it do? Okay, this will send signal to the bone marrow. Namada bone marrow, namada bones lay a bone marrow, erythropoietin signal. Okay. Are you working in the area? You can produce RBCs in the area. You can produce RBCs in the area. So please produce more of RBCs. Because RBCs are not oxygen carriage, they are tissues. So this erythropoietin will tell the bone marrow that you produce more of RBCs. Anyway, so RBCs are already produced in the area. On top of that, erythropoietin will also tell the bone marrow to please produce more of RBCs. Okay, because tissues don't know oxygen. Okay, so what is it? So all the bones will start producing more of RBCs and there. And because of that, you know, not just the long bones. Long bones are not the same as the cell cell, RBC, WBC, plated cell. But in the condition, these long bones are not the same. Our body will be bones. They will be like, okay, long bones are not the same. They will work. And the body will not be the same. So, all RBCs are not the same. So, I am also the same. All RBCs are produced. All bones are not the same. So, first one, even the skull thinks that. Okay, so skull is over activity. Skull also will start producing more of RBCs. Erythroid hyperplasia. Erythroid means? rbc so erythroid hyperplasia in the bones in the so this skull because of its over activity it will give a special appearance called as crew cut or a hair on end appearance of the skull you understood crew cut or hair on end appearance of the skull now once again let me tell you the pathology behind it erythropoietin will tell all the bone marrows of the body that uh, see there is some problem occurring in the body my oxygen supply to the i mean oxygen supply to the tissue is less hmm? so and rbcs are the ones which carry oxygen to the all the cells so the erythropoietin will tell the bone marrow of all the bones please produce more of rbcs so all the bones will be hyperactive okay not just the long bones sadharana long bones matrame rbcs produce i mean cells produce 
പക്ഷേ ഇവിടെ എല്ലാ ബോൺസും ആക്ടിവേറ്റഡ് ആയിട്ട് പറയും ഓക്കെ ഞങ്ങൾ എന്നാൽ കുറച്ചും കൂടെ ആർ ബി ഞങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും സഹായിക്കാം ആർ ബി സി പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യാം അങ്ങനെ എല്ലാ ബോൺസും ആർ ബി സിസ് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യും ഈവൻ ദ സ്കൾ വിൽ സ്റ്റാർട്ട് പ്രൊഡ്യൂസിങ് ആർ ബി സി സോ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഓർ ആക്ടിവിറ്റി നടക്കുന്നതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ സ്കളിൽ വരുന്നൊരു ചേഞ്ച് ആണ് ക്രൂ കട്ട് അപ്പിയറൻസ് ഓർ ഹെയർ ഓൺ ആൻഡ് അപ്പിയറൻസ് ഐ ഷോ ഇത് പിക്ചർ ഓക്കെ സി ദിസ് പിക്ചർ ഹിയർ വേറെ ഒന്ന് നോക്കണ്ട സി ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ക്രൂ കട്ട് അപ്പിയറൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്കൾ ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് സീൻ ഇൻ താലസേമിയ ഓക്കെ നോ ഓൾസോ വൺ മോർ തിങ് ദ സ്ക്രൂ കട്ട് അപ്പിയറൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്കൾ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ജസ്റ്റ് സീൻ ഇൻ താലസേമിയ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഓൾസോ സീൻ ഇൻ സിക്കിൾ സെൽ അനേമിയ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഓക്കെ ദിസ് ഇസ് യു വൈവ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു എക്സ്റേ എക്സ്റേ അവർ തരും അപ്പം ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി വാട്ട് ഇസ് ഇസ് അപ്പിയറൻസ് എന്ന് അവർ ചോദിക്കും സോ യു മസ് സി ക്രൂ കട്ട് അപ്പിയറൻസ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്കൾ ഓക്കെ യു ഗോട്ട് വൺ മാർക്ക് വെരി ഗുഡ് വൺ മാർക്ക് now they'll ask you why it happens okay so most people will say only ah oh, sir it is thalassemia but you should also say sir it is sickle cell it could be sickle cell anemia it could be thalassemia okay so guys yes sir huh? just yeah i had a visitor at home that's why i had to go okay let's continue guys okay chip uh, chipmunk facies huh? where can you see chipmunk facies very very important okay this will be given in the question it is seen in thalassemia and why does thalassemia patient have uh, chipmunk facies i'll show you the picture of uh, of uh, chipmunk facies but before that tell me why does this occur because the maxillary prominence no the maxillary prominence that Uh, will be increased because of hematopoiesis so ella bones njan parnu rbc produce cheyanayittulla therakil nikkana so nammada maxillary prominence um in there were a lot of rbcs it will produce and that is why because it is over acting that maxillary prominence will be increased in size and that gives a chipmunk facies okay now let's see a picture of that okay see this picture just a moment where is the picture yes see this picture this is a chipmunk facies okay this one can you see the maxillary prominence enlarged yes so now since all of these are occurring in the body see a lot of rbcs are being formed in the body because of this okay all our bones from rbcs are producing so you know for the rbcs to live okay what is the food of rbc it is the iron alle rbcs body less uh, survive cheyanengil it requires a lot of iron and for this okay the body will send signal to the intestine the body will send signal to the intestine it says okay eppadakka iron ningal Uh, you know a patient is having iron rich food you absorb every iron okay from the intestine because see kore rbcs in the body le form cheyunnundu okay and it, they require a lot of iron so you you absorb a lot of iron from the intestine so this is what the brain tells to the intestine okay and also this thalassemia patient gets a lot of blood transfusions i told you that right so because of these two reasons there is going to be iron overload in the patient now your next question comes here the question is why does thalassemia patient has iron overload so the first answer definitely blood transfusion can the second reason is that because of increased rbc production the body's uh, demand for iron increases okay now what is the treatment for iron overload your one mark question it is desferoxamine okay so this you should not forget even in your sleep you should say what uh, you should say that uh, iron overload ka treatment kya hai guys it is desferoxamine okay now remember in beta thalassemia you get to see uh, target cells okay so they can give you the peripheral smear okay and uh, can you see it looks like a target can you see the cell okay target cell so that is your target cell also can you see that these are cells which are having nucleus so here the rbcs are having nucleus right normally rbcs don't have nucleus so nucleated rbcs can also be seen and where these two cells are seen guys that is seen in beta thalassemia major okay in beta thalassemia major you get to see target cells and nucleated rbcs okay now also one more question in beta thalassemia what is the type of uh, rbc that you see is it nomocytic nomochromic is it uh, hypochromic or microcytic what is it it is tell me in beta thalassemia very important question in beta thalassemia the type of rbc you get in peripheral smear is microcytic yes it is a microcytic hypochromic okay hypochromic rbc very very important microcytic hypochromic rbc okay now again here in beta thalassemia also what is the confirmatory test i told you any hemoglobinopathy the confirmatory test is going to be what guys it is hplc okay hplc and remember in beta thalassemia major i told you 
uh, in the pathogenesis i told you a lot of alpha 2 and gamma 2 chains will be formed which are basically hemoglobin f right you remember me telling that yes so when you do hplc in if it is a beta thalassemia major the patient is going to have increased levels of uh, fetal hemoglobin this is another question so in beta thalassemia major in beta thalassemia major write it down fetal hemoglobin increases okay and you know the pathology i told you why it occurs right alpha 2 will join with gamma 2 chains and they form the fetal hemoglobin okay fine that's all about your beta thalassemia major now a short topic that is thalassemia minor or the trait in beta thalassemia minor okay beta thalassemia minor i told you such patients are asymptomatic they don't have any problem see it's like you know they have a normal beta chain okay and they have either they can have a little bit the other beta chain could be sometimes you know yeah a little bit of normal or you know the combination could be they have a normal beta chain and the other beta chain could be absent okay so this is a combination such a patient can have since they have one normal beta chain they are going to be completely normal okay every parameter is going to be normal now when you do a test okay you find out that accidentally you find out that this patient coming to you has got this beta uh, has got this um, thalassemia trait or uh, thalassemia minor and yet you inform see he is completely normal he has no problem at all but yet you tell him okay ningalku thalassemia you inform him about his condition ningalku thalassemia minor allengal trait ennu parnad asugam undu endana ningal adu cheynathu or asugam illatha or clinical feature illatha or aalane nammal endana ingane parnad the reason is because if he mar if he is marrying okay a partner who is also a thalassemia minor then the offsprings might get actual thalassemia right the children can get thalassemia major adu kondana nammal avare counsel cheyana appo ningal kalyanam kadikkuna aalu before getting married ningal avarde ee thalassemia trait onnu check cheya avaru thalassemia avarum thalassemia minoril peduna oru patient aanu engil because porame angarathe patients normal aayirikkum appo ivaru ningal appo angane kandu pidichu ningal kettan pona aalum beta thalassemia minor aanu engil better don't have kids because angane oru ningal kunnigal endakkiyal angarathe rendu parents kunnigal endakkiyal child may be come thalassemia major which is very problematic like bangare or complicated disease another repeated blood transfusions and all the complications so avoid up basically we are counseling them okay beta thalassemia minor as such they are completely normal people so happy to know that these people are normal right okay next now now after knowing that you are very smart okay what does your examiner do he'll ask you okay you you told a lot about beta thalassemia trait fine now tell me how will you differentiate between okay he'll ask you what is one more disease that looks like iron def uh, that looks like beta thalassemia trait it is iron deficiency anemia so this iron deficiency anemia and beta thalassemia trait both are examples of microcytic hypochromic anemia okay so don't forget this both are in peripheral smear if you see microcytic hypochromic anemia it could be either actually there are many other diseases okay now here uh, it could be yeah it could be beta thalassemia trait it could be iron deficiency anemia now how will you differentiate which is which okay we have an index called as menser's index very 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 important menser's index now if this menser's index you know how do you calculate menser's index guys hmm? you take m you take r see basically it is mcv by rbc count okay mcv by rbc count and if if it is more than 13 if it is more than 13 it is iron deficiency anemia and if it is less than 13 it is thalassemia engane ningal dorthirikkum eh thalassemia see thalassemia la peru la thaniyund or less le so if it is less than 13 in menser's index it is beta thalassemia right beta thalassemia trait and if it's more than 13 it is iron deficiency anemia very important again beta thalassemia trait ningal confirm cheynathu it is by any confirmatory test if they ask you and you don't know the answer you mark hplc okay ella hemoglobin pathi slim confirmatory test is hplc very important and also there is one more you know uh, something to mug up here in beta thalassemia trait okay nan parnu beta thalassemia major la Uh, there is good in beta thalassemia major i told you hb f is going to be increased you remember that okay in beta thalassemia trait their hba2 
okay is going to be increased it will be more than 3.5 percent this is something to mug up okay so in the question tell up and direct at our theorem see they'll give you a long history hmm? even in viva the questions will be like they'll he the your examiner will give you a long history and at last he'll say the hplc shows hpa2 more than 3.5 percent what is your diagnosis what is your diagnosis guys it is beta thalassemia trait okay and then you get full marks okay happy happy you so this is important huh? now guys you have a test called as nestroft test okay this we have a print chain test like it's outdated actually but i'm going to see but oh yeah they will ask you in the exams what is this nestroft test okay this is the first thing it is for thalassemia okay namaku thalassemia kandupidikkanana nestroft test ullad now what do we do in this test what is the full form of this test by the way what is the full form hmm? it is naked eye single tube red cell osmotic fragility test again once more it is naked eye single tube red cell osmotic fragility test okay so as a name suggest in the naked eye which is a diagnosis on i mean a inference on a naked eye number of tube not number of under tube at come i'll show you the picture okay or white paper at come white paper and uh one second uh, yeah but i'm looking at black lines where i keep okay and then i'm going to test you but it's a number of blood is not a patient of blood and the in a third okay now the concept is guys if the patient usually blood should settle down okay so actually blood in the good we put the patient's blood okay and we put a uh, hypotonic saline okay normally number of saline hypotonic saline number it tell what happens is guys hypotonic saline it tell in the bottom blood lake correct well up is a hypotonic saline correct well and blood cells like a point of blood cells as well either break out okay now other than normal so i'm gonna break on with the come you train blood dividing in all the blood in the bottom e blood yeah ഈ ബ്ലഡ് ഇങ്ങനെ ഇടുന്ന ബ്ലഡ് കുറച്ച് താഴോട്ടാകും ബിക്കോസ് ബ്രേക്ക് ആയിട്ട് താഴോട്ട് വരും പക്ഷേ തലസേമിയ ആർ ബി സിസിലെ തലസേമിയ ആർ ബി സിസ് ആർ വെരി ടഫ് ആർ ബി സിസ് ടി ഫോർട്ടി ഓക്കെ തലസേമിയ ആർ ബി സിസ് എ വെരി ടഫ് ആർ ബി സിസ് സോ ഇതിപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ തലസേമിയ ബ്ലഡ് ആണ് ഇട്ടിരുന്നതെങ്കിൽ ഈ ഹൈപ്പോട്ടോണിക് സലൈനിൽ ഒഴിക്കുമ്പോഴത്തേക്കും ഈ ബ്ലഡ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ഈ ആർ ബി സിസ് ഉണ്ടല്ലോ അവർ ബ്രേക്ക് ആവത്തില്ല അതേപോലെ തന്നെ നിൽക്കും ഓക്കെ സോ സോ ബേസിക്കലി ഈ ലൈൻസ് ഇപ്പം ഞാനിങ്ങനെ ഒരു പേപ്പറിൻ്റെ ഫ്രണ്ടിൽ വെച്ചാണ് ഈ ഒരു ട്യൂബ് ഞാനിങ്ങനെ ഒരു ആദ്യമേ ഒരു വൈറ്റ് പേപ്പർ എടുക്കും എന്നിട്ട് ഈ ബ്ലാക്ക് ലൈൻസ് വരയ്ക്കും എന്നിട്ട് ആ ട്യൂബ് ഞാൻ എൻ്റെ ഫ്രണ്ടിൽ പിടിക്കും ഓക്കെ സോ എനിക്ക് ആ ബ്ലാക്ക് ലൈൻസ് ഈ ട്യൂബിൽ കൂടെ കാണാൻ പറ്റുന്നില്ല എങ്കിൽ അതിൻ്റെ അർത്ഥം ആർ ബി സി സിസ് ഇവിടെ തന്നെ ഇരിക്കുന്നുണ്ട് ആർ ബി സി ഇസ് നോട്ട് സെറ്റിലിംഗ് എന്നാണ് അർത്ഥം എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ആർ ബി സി ഇസ് നോട്ട് ലൈസ്ഡ് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ആർ ബി സി ഇസ് യു ആർ ആ വെരി വെരി ടഫ് ആൻഡ് വെരി ടഫ് ആർ ബി സി ഇസ് യു ഗെറ്റ് ഇൻ വാട്ട് ഗൈസ് ടെൽ മീ യു ഗെറ്റ് ഇൻ തലസേമിയ ടി ഫോർട്ടി T for tough, T for thalassemia. Whereas, I have a normal patient in the blood in the hypotonic saline. I have a lot of blood collected in the blood. This RBC is a break out. Okay, in the hypotonic saline, RBC is a break out. RBC is a settling. Okay, now I have a test tube with a paper in the front. I have a black line. Because RBC is a settling. Okay, so that is it all about your Nestroff test marker. That is for thalassemia. Don't forget. Now, few more points about the blood test. So, Nestroff test marker. That is for thalassemia. Don't forget. Now, few more points about alpha thalassemia. ഈ ആൽഫ തലസേമിയയിൽ കുറേ കോമ്പിനേഷൻസ് ബേസിക്കലി ആൽഫ തലസേമിയയിൽ ഗൈസ് ഒരു മിനിറ്റ് ആ ആൽഫ തലസേമിയയിൽ ആൽഫ ചെയിൻസ് ആർ ഡിലീറ്റഡ് ഓക്കെ ദാറ്റ് യു നോ ഫൈൻ അപ്പോൾ അതിൻ്റെ കുറേ യുനോ വേരിയേഷൻസ് ഉണ്ട് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ഞാൻ ഇങ്ങനെ എഴുതാണ് ഓക്കെ രണ്ട് ആൽഫ ചെയിൻ ഉണ്ട് ഇവിടെ രണ്ട് ആൽഫ ചെയിൻ ഉണ്ട് വിച്ച് മീൻസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ നോർമൽ പേഴ്സൺ ഓക്കെ ഇനി ഞാൻ എന്താ ഇങ്ങനെ എഴുതാണ് എങ്കിൽ എന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ ഇവിടെ രണ്ട് ആൽഫ ചെയിൻസ് ഉണ്ട് ഹാപ്പി ഇവിടെ ഒരു ആൽഫ ചെയിനേ ഉള്ളൂ ഇതാ ഇവിടെ ഇല്ല ഓക്കെ so what is it yes or alpha chain illa nu parnittu velliya prashnam onnu undavalla the patient is going to be he is thalassemia patient pashe asymptomatic aayirikkum okay now adutathu ingane oru sambhavam vera nu vacha ayalku rendu alpha chain e ullu okay baaki rendu alpha chains kaanunnilla okay so this is a alpha thalassemia trait so question number 1 okay if the question examiner ask you if two alpha genes are deleted if two alpha genes are deleted it is alpha thalassemia trait okay ini adutha combination nokka da moon alpha chains and deleted aanu aa pade onne ullu okay or alpha chain e ullu so ivide it's like you know almost or alpha chain um illa okay it's almost like there is no alpha chain alle now normally see normally alpha 2 beta 2 aanu nammal ellarum ullathu adu namukku ariyalo now ivide alpha 2 chains onnu undavan pattathilla because completely alpha chains ivide mostly illa nu enna parayam so 
നമ്മുടെ ബീറ്റാ ചെയിൻസ് ഇവിടെ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുമെന്ന് അറിയുമോ ഈ ബീറ്റ ചെയിൻസ് വിൽ ജോയിൻ വിത്ത് അതർ ടു ബീറ്റ ചെയിൻസ് ടു ഫോം ബീറ്റ ഫോർ ടെട്രാമേഴ്സ് എന്താണ് ബീറ്റ ഫോർ ടെട്രാമേഴ്സ് വെരി വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഓക്കെ ഈ ബീറ്റ ഫോർ ടെട്രാമേഴ്സ് ഉള്ള പേഷ്യൻറ്റിന് പറയുന്ന പേരാണ് എച്ച് ബി എച്ച് ഡിസീസ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് എന്താണ് എച്ച് ബി എച്ച് ഡിസീസ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് നൗ ക്യാച്ച് പോയിൻറ്റ് എച്ച് ബി എച്ച് ഡിസീസ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റിൽ നിങ്ങൾ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പിയിൽ വാട്ട് ബോഡീസ് വിൽ യു സി ഇഫ് യു ആൻസർ ദിസ് you can get a cookie for yourself okay because it's a very important question see hbh disease in microscopic examination you get to see golf ball inclusions okay you get to see golf ball inclusions i'll show you the picture right now so just a moment so remember golf ball inclusions are seen when three alpha chains are deleted and beta 4 tetramers are formed the patient is suffering from a disease called as hbh disease in, in this condition you get to see golf ball inclusions now let me show you the picture of golf ball inclusions yes 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 yeah can you see this picture here okay can you see this picture this is like a golf ball right so this is again repeat after me it is seen in a disease called as hbh disease very good what is the problem here it is a kind of alpha thalassemia yes and what is the genetic problem here almost three alpha genes are alpha genes are deleted right and this results in the formation of beta 4 tetramers very very important beta 4 tetramers and this in microscopy will give you the appearance of golf ball inclusions very very important now one more question to you guys what if all the alpha chains are deleted it's like just a moment yeah it's like all the alpha chains are deleted see in this condition no Uh, this results in intrauterine death. If alpha chains are not in the same way, complete absence are not in the same way, in intrauterine death or you know, it's called as hydrops fetalis. Okay. And this disease has another name when you know, all the alpha chains are missing. No alpha chain is not. So this results in a disease called as H.B. Bart's disease. Okay. H.B. Bart's disease uh, where something to mug up if you want. Okay. One more extra information where Uh, such namal ipam avara genetics eduth nokkale they have this gamma 4 tetramers okay not needed if you want you can uh, memorize it so in hp bart's disease gamma 4 tetramers are formed and this is not compatible with life ingal thalkar jeevichirikkala intrauterine death then but okay when all the alpha chains are deleted okay so i think we are done almost with uh, not almost yeah all the points have cover, covered about uh, sickle cell anemia and uh, thalassemia if you have any doubts or if you want me to take any topics you can uh, pin it on the comment section okay yeah take care guys stay blessed bye bye